Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and this time around, I want to talk about a new AF option that our Z8 and our Z9 both have with their most recent updates, firmware 2.0 on the Z8 and 5.0 on the Z9. This new AF feature is going to totally overhaul the way you use your AF areas on the camera, how you get to them, and it is really a game changer, I think. So what is it? It is Cycle AF Area Modes, and if you've already used it or you already have it set up or you're familiar with it, I encourage you to keep watching this video because there is a mistake that people keep making when they're setting it up. And I'm going to show you how to avoid that mistake or how to correct that mistake if you've already made it. So make sure you stick around. But before we get into that, let's talk about what Cycle AF Area Modes actually does and why it's so advantageous. So Cycle AF Areas is pretty simple in concept. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to program that feature to one of our buttons. I have mine on the video record button. And what it allows me to do is I simply press this button and it goes from one AF area to the next. That's it. Pretty easy. And it seems like maybe something we don't need since we can already press a button, like down here, this AF area mode button, and then we can turn a dial and we can switch to our different AF areas. But the problem is people don't like to do that. <laughs> it's kind of an awkward way of doing it. It's in a bad place if you have a telephoto lens and you need to get to that button there. So you got to press this button here. And then you got to turn the dial up here and then you're not hanging onto the lens anymore, which is not real good for the lens mount, right? So then we end up programming it someplace else or whatever. And it's just not ideal. And you can also see that people don't like it because what do they do? They program AF areas on a ton of different buttons throughout the camera and on the lenses even, right? So for example, maybe we'll put an AF area on our FN1 button, another one on our FN2 button. Maybe we have one on the lens function button so that we have to basically play the camera like some kind of a weird musical instrument anytime we want a different AF area. And all of this for a lot of people is just in the name of not having to mess with the focus mode button and turn these dials to get to an appropriate AF area. And that, let me tell you, is no way to live. The best way to use your camera's AF area modes is to have the proper one selected for the subject that you're dealing with at that moment and use those overrides just as an override or if you need to do a handoff. And as a side note about handoffs, this is not a substitute for AF handoffs. So for example, if you're using your wide AF area with subject detection and you're waiting to see subject detection take over and when it does, you wanna to switch to auto or 3D on the fly by pressing one of your pre-programmed buttons here, like my FN1, for example, is set for auto AF. So I can just press that and it'll switch to auto and I can have the whole run of the viewfinder. This is not a substitute for that. This does not do that. This is just changing your primary AF area. And by the way, if you have no idea what I'm talking about with AF handoffs, make sure you see my recent video about Z8 and Z9 burden flight settings. I talk about them there, and I also talk about them in my Z8, Z9 setup guide. So beyond eliminating the awkward press and turn situation and eliminating the need to press buttons indefinitely, what is the big advantage here? And the answer to that is speed. This thing is really, really fast. And it's one of those things that you don't realize how quick it is until you get used to it. Because at first it's like, yeah, this is a little bit quicker than cycling through AF areas by pressing and turning. But in a very short amount of time, what's going to happen is you're going to know how many presses it takes to get from one AF area to the one that you want. So for example, I know with the AF areas that I have selected, we can select the AF areas. So this is going to be different for everybody. But for me, it is four presses to get from single point AF to 3D AF. So if I need to be in 3D AF, all I have to do is go one, two, three, four, and I'm there. And you can see in this Atomos footage how quick that is. That is almost as fast as pressing a button. So the speed advantage here is probably the most significant advantage and it makes it really, really easy to get from one AF area to the next in the fastest possible way. And it encourages you to actually use the proper AF area for any given scene. So let's jump in and I'm gonna show you how to set this up and I'll show you that mistake that I was talking about and how to avoid that. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're gonna press the menu button. I'm using a Z8 in this case, but this works exactly the same for the Z9. I'm gonna to go to F, and that is the controls area. I'm gonna press the right side of my multi-selector, and I'm gonna to go to F2. In my case, it happened to be highlighted already, but if you need to, you might have to scroll to it. Once you're on it, press the right side of your multi-selector. And my recommendation is the video record button to cycle your AF area mode. And the reason for that is simple. If I am switching my primary AF area mode on the camera, I'm probably not taking pictures at that very instant. I might be taking it a split second afterwards, but I'm not taking it at that moment. So my index finger can 
do something else besides press the shutter there because you know sometimes it gets bored so i recommend the video record button i find it to be a very intuitive location and i'm going to give this a click here mine of course is already programmed for cycle af area mode but if yours isn't you'll have to scroll down to it and if you notice it's not too far down from the top so we're just going to go down to where it says cycle af area mode but you can't just highlight it you need to press the right side of the multi-selector so you can make some selections here now these little check boxes allow us to decide what's going to be cycled and what's not. If it's checked, it's going to be cycled. So if I wanted single point AF, I would check it. If I want to not have that in the rotation, I can hit the OK button and uncheck it. I do want that, so I'm going to check that again. I don't really use my dynamic areas. I do use a few of these wide areas. I use 3D and Auto, and those are the ones that I cycle through. Now, you may have more or less than this. There's a couple of schools of thought here. The first is only put like two of them in here, maybe three at the most, and then you can just kind of use your most frequently used AF areas right on that video record button in this case, whatever button you program. Or you can put the ones that you use most of the time, which is what I've done, simply because it is so fast to go from one to the next. I don't think having an extra AF area mode or two on here is going to make any kind of impact on whether or not I'm going to get a shot because I have to press a button two more times or something. So for me, I put the ones that I'm going to use almost all the time. So I use single point frequently. I use wide AF small and large all the time. I have a wide AF area C1 checked here. This is just a one by one area. This is pretty much the same thing as a single point AF area, but this one supports subject detection. So I like to keep that in the rotation. And then I have 3D and auto. Those are the ones I use. But obviously, check and uncheck the ones that you use the most. And that's all you have to do. And that's why I was saying sometimes, you know, we all have different numbers of presses that we have for our cycles because we all pick different things. Once you have all of this selected, press the menu button to finish up. And that will lock it in. You have to press that or it won't lock in. All right, so that's the first step. And this is where people get messed up because what's going to happen is a lot of times they'll start cycling and they'll notice one of the AF areas they've checked is not showing up. So we have to do one more thing. So let's go back to our custom setting menu. I'm going to go over one to the left there. Just press the left side of the multi-selector so I can quickly get up to the focus area here. Then I'm going to press the right side of the multi-selector. And what I'm looking for here is limit AF area mode selection. And I'm going to give this a click. And if you'll notice, this is very similar to what we just saw. But it's very important here that the same items that you had checked in cycle AF area mode are also checked here. You can have other ones checked in here as well. But the mistake comes in is let's say I have wide AF area programmed as one of the things I cycle to. If I have it unchecked in this menu, it will not cycle to wide AF small in this case. I have to make sure that it's checked in this menu and on the cycle AF area menu. If it's not checked in both places, you're never gonna cycle to it because this menu has precedent over the other one. So anything that's unchecked in here, you can check it all day long in that other menu. Anything that's unchecked in here will not show up on your cycle AF areas when you go to cycle them. You'll be able to check it within that menu, but it won't actually cycle when, you, when you're out in the field. So you have to make sure that everything that you want is checked in here and once you're done, once again, press the menu button, and that takes care of that. Now, just a quick side note for my Z9 shooters out there. One of the things you might want to change is the ISO button on the vertical grip. Now, I know there is a programmable button, this one right here, that's just basically designed to take on new responsibilities, and it seems like that would be a good place to put cycle AF area. The problem is, though, the location of that button is to the right rather than to the left of where the shutter release is and muscle memory is going to kick in and you're not going to remember to go there. Instead, you're going to go to the ISO button. So I leave that one on exposure compensation because it kind of roughly aligns with exposure compensation for horizontal shooting. This one though, I'm going to change from ISO and I'm going to scroll up here to cycle AF area mode. Just double check it, make sure everything looks good in here and hit menu to be done. And now that one's going to do cycle AF area mode because it's in sort of close to the same place as where the video record button is. Not quite, not quite, but it's pretty close. And I'm not too worried about ISO because I can still turn auto ISO on and off with the ISO button by the main shutter release. And I have ISO on my control ring on my lenses so that I have access to that whether I'm shooting vertical or horizontal if I'm in manual mode and I need to change it. So having an ISO button down there for me anyhow isn't real important, but... 
muscle memory is going to really want that ISO button to be cycling AF airy mode. So that's how I have mine set. And of course, your mileage may vary when you're deciding which buttons to use. Those buttons work well for me, but you know, we all have different priorities and different field workflows, which speaking of which, I realize that I'm very excited about this, but it's not necessarily for everyone. There might be some people out there who prefer to actually just keep it the way it was with AF areas assigned to specific buttons. Maybe that works better for you. Whatever your field workflow is, as always, I encourage you to do what works best for you, not just listen to some guy on the internet. But in any event, that's the end of our video. I hope you'll at least give this a try though. For me, it's really been a game changer. And by the way, if you enjoy customizing your camera and learning about these customizations, make sure you check out my Z8 and Z9 setup guide. It is absolutely loaded with hundreds of pages of advice, just like what you saw here in this video. As always, Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.